everybody knows. Hey guys, it's PDR, Picture Dude Rocks, David, Nathan Gonzalez, DJ Dex, whatever the hell you want to call me. I was just out there mowing the lawn, as one does. No, it's not an Hispanic thing. And something I like to do while I mow the lawn is listen to albums. How many of you guys still do that? I was actually listening to Logic's sophomore album, The Incredible True Story, which is in fact not a true story, but it is incredible. I thought it was a little better than Under Pressure, his debut album. And the story is quite enjoyable. Let's rewind a day ago. My friend DMs me on Twitter. Oh, it's a video where Logic explains the concept of the album, takes the packaging, shows you the cover art, who the hell is in it, stuff inside, blah, blah, blah. And I was enjoying it, I was like, yeah, I remember when you tweeted this stuff out. I thought it was really cool. Logic basically explains that this album is actually two shipmates on a spacecraft listening to oldies, including the album, and that the last album was actually them listening to that album as well, as they went to the stars. Here's what really bothers me. Cool thing is over here, if you if you read it, it gives it gives the listener something. The incredible true story and transformation of the man who saved the world is a script that Logic wrote that takes place in 2115. It is an audio cinematic experience that mainly takes place inside. And that's where my problems begin. Instead of letting the listener start the album and figure it out for themselves that this is some sort of narrative, Logic goes out of his way to explain that it's a script that he wrote, that it's a story. Then I started getting more and more disappointed as he kept going on. Reason being because I felt the subtlety kind of dying and I started to recognize Logic's penchant and affinity for obviousness. Obvious logic. And I think this kind of ties into the sound of the album as a whole as well, which is kind of a problem. For example, one of the first sounds in the album we ever heard was one of my favorite songs, I Am The Greatest. Super sweet sample. He was using that first trailer, teaser trailer thing of his. And if you listen to the song, you can tell it kind of has like a different style that's not exactly his. Actually, he's been pretty open. It's inspired by Drake. And you can hear it in the song, And you can kind of tell in the song, oh yeah, this kind of sounds like Drake and if your beat thing is too late, you know, I'm a cis man, I'm just a scar, I do way from a neck. You know, but what's kind of strange is to hear him in the second verse of the song kind of straight up alluding a little too heavily to his inspiration. He says something about, it's a braggadocious rash. It, it's kind of strange to see him go out of his way to let you know, hey, <laughs> You know how this is a style that's not exactly mine and you kind of like it? Yeah, it's just Drake's and I, I'm doing it. The bragging? <laughs> like Drake, when he brags, hi, it's me right here right now. Braggadocious, <laughs> look it up. Brag. I'm the greatest. Yeah, like, dude, we can tell. Don't gotta tell us you're bragging on this song because we can kind of tell it's not the humblest song by the title. But whatever, maybe that's too loose. On one of my other favorite songs, Young Jesus, kind of does a similar thing. You know, you hear the sample, you're like, oh, it's about to be one of those boom bap tracks. And if you listen to Logic, you know that he has an affinity for East Coast because he's from East Coast, Maryland, Rose, that pure one. But he's not exactly a boom bap guy. He's pretty modest. So it's interesting and appealing to hear on something like this. But then he instantly squanders it by going in with the cringe factor and saying, hey, let's take it back to the 90s. What are you doing? Like, first of all, I, it's not exactly just the 90s. I don't understand. Pull a little further back. But just let it be. Like, I get it. You're doing a kind of throwback song with your buddy Big Lembo. B-I-G-L-M-B-L-M-B-O. Oh. B I N G. Big Lumbo was his name. It is kind of embarrassing to hear him like, yeah, you guys like those? I'm doing that. Shut up. No hate. But maybe the worst offender in the album is when he does the very important song, City of Stars. The song takes influence from one of Kanye West's best albums, 808s and Heartbreaks. And it's apparent off the well. Oh, what? Does he say that I, like it's like a 808s and Heartbreaks song? No, he doesn't quite do that. What he does do, though, is in the song, it's all about hip hop and how he's kind of distraught with the genre and blah, blah, blah. He used to love it, but now he doesn't. This man straight up says in one of the lyrics, This ain't a love song, no, this is so lame. Like, what? You're going out of your way. Like, hey, I know this sounds like it's a heart race song, like it's a love song, like it's, oh man, I love you. But this is not a love song. 
I don't get it. This song clearly takes a turn by the time he starts actually rapping. And I think it's obvious enough that one could listen and piece together, whoa. That chorus kind of sounds like a love song, but the verse kind of sounds like I'm talking about hip hop. What if this a love song is a metaphor about hip hop? This is a love song! My thing here is I think this might be a testament to where listeners are at nowadays, or at least where creatives think people are at today. I don't want to say this is Logic's fault per se, maybe, you know, his label was behind this, but it seems like they're dumbing down the music, or at least not letting any sense of subtlety survive. We don't need the page saying, this is a story, guys. This is something Logic wrote. It's not actually true. Because we get it. We don't need you telling us, hey, remember Drake? I'm doing that. It's like, it's a, if you're reading this, it's too late, but my. Because we get it. We don't need you to tell us it's a throwback. We get it. And we don't need you to just hold our hands and tell us it's a metaphor. Because we get it. Now, I'm not saying Logic should never explain anything from his album. Because that's fun to talk about. We don't just keep metaphors a secret. But I don't think it's worth much when you reveal it and don't let it be something the listener figures out and finds out. <laughs> it honestly kind of reminds me of when Nas said it and I gave you power. I'm a mountain gun. Imagine if Inception ended exclaiming what happened with the top at the very end. Instead of people making theories for it. Why do I bring up a movie? Because Logic kind of wanted to bring this whole cinematic universe thing into music, which is a noble idea. Tyler, the creator, has dabbled with some of this stuff, as many other artists have too. But this intrigued me when I first heard about it. And one of his inspirations happened to be Quentin Tarantino. And it's like, all right, this is cool. Tarantino has connections amongst you know, his movies. What if Logic's albums kind of have that too? Yeah, but imagine if Tarantino went out of his way to tell you, hey, you remember in Kill Bill? That thing is also in Pulp Fiction. Look at it, watch the movie right now. Actually, let's, let's cut to a clip. Wow. Oh my. Oh my. Again. So I don't know, I feel like artists, we should expect more of our listeners and, you know, let them figure it out for themselves. I get Logic wants to be like Tarantino and he has to kind of appreciate some of those things and actually follow through. Let's be more subtle, guys. Let's not be so obvious. And wait, 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 to Logic's credit, I will say, he doesn't fully reveal everything about his album's concept. Something that was kind of unexpected to me and he didn't really reveal was that the whole space exploration thing and how listening to the album in this second album is actually people listening to the album. Like the album takes place in space and there are these two dudes listening to old music, which one of them happens to be this album. And the AI you hear in Under Pressure, Logic's first album, is actually the AI of the ship when they're listening to the first album and then they get to the second album, which is us listening to the blah blah blah. Sounds pretty simple. I mean, to be honest, the narrative isn't that deep. But there is this extra layer that you kind of start peeling back by the end of the track list. There's this planet that they've been looking for this entire time called Paradise. And you would think, oh, is it an illusion for heaven? Sure. Because it's supposed to be a planet that's sustainable and they can live on. Great. But it becomes more obvious as you keep listening that Paradise and this whole narrative is actually kind of a metaphor for the creative struggle and what it's like to be an artist. The two shipmates often dialogue about how since they have to survive in space all the time, they don't really have time to just enjoy life and just not live for a mission and just live for themselves. And I guess Logic kind of feels that heaven, paradise, truly living is when you get freedom to be creative. Sometimes it's a physical limitation, sometimes it's a political, sometimes it's literally the fate of your planet, as it's presented in this extreme case, um, or humanity, I guess. But creative freedom is kind of Logic's heaven. It's his paradise. It's his faraway planet that has Earth-like resources, which is kind of cool. It's Logic's way of saying, life for me is creativity. So kudos to him. I think that was obvious in the music, but it was fun to figure out because you only understood it as the tracks went on. Hopefully it works like this inspire everybody from the trap to the boom bat to the experimental whatever to start doing things that are out of the box and they expect more from us, the listener. And hey, I'm an artist too. I kind of dabble with stuff like this and it kind of inspires me, I'll admit, to do things that are a little more challenging and demand more from you. So pay attention.
I've been feeling like a motherfucking postman Sending letters to the people, all the letters that I got, I'm like an old man